They're going to show up on the right. Okay, got it. You see it right now? No, let me see. You don't see them on the right? Hey, guys, welcome. All right, all right, all right. Hey, everyone, welcome. Thanks for being here. I'm Ronnie Brown, and today we are going to have some fun. Let me make sure all devices are off. We are talking a little bit about growing your social media. Comment in the chat. Let me know if you all can see me, hear me clearly, and go ahead and drop your questions in the chat. We are going to be answering the questions live here on the channel as well. Thanks for being here. Many of you guys are here because you are trying to grow your social media. Um, I have been having a ball on social media for quite some time. So I'm excited to get your questions answered today. All right. So first things first, um, social media is one of those things where if you are not on social media, using social media to grow your business, you are doing your business a big disservice. OK, how many of you all are currently using social media to grow your business? Comment in the chat. Um, just drop your business in the chat. Let me know. Uh, what is your business? How long have you been in business? And have you finally made the decision that, yes, I'm going to use social media to grow my business because I see the power of social media and I see how it can help me grow and scale my business? All right. Many of you all are finally getting to that point. There was, you know, a time where a lot of people were 100 percent uncomfortable with being on social media. You know, you didn't want to post. You were very private. Um, you were kind of worried about the type of content that you could put out there and so forth. And now people are finally making that transition. They're saying, you know, I see the power of social media. I see how it can grow my business. You know, I see how it can change my life. And I'm going to get a little more serious about it. So I want to kind of take you all um, through this journey. Many of you all have submitted some questions. You can also put your questions in the chat and we will kind of answer. I'll answer the questions on here live. But I want to go over a few, over a few things. Right now, social media is taking a big shift, right? Initially, um, social media was one of those things where um, everyone was trying to do perfect perfectionist types of things, right? They thought they had to have the best lighting. They had to have the best cameras. Um, everything has to be scripted and perfect, right? We're in a place now where things are changing and authenticity is rising to the top, okay? And I love when I say I love, I love now that authenticity is winning. I love that people are being able to be true to themselves. I love that people are leaning more towards people showing their personality and who they are. And what we're really seeing is the rise of personal brand. Um, there was a time where people owned companies and businesses, and we had no clue. And when I say no clue, we had no clue who those people were that were running those companies. We had no idea, you know, who was behind those businesses. We just didn't know. And today things are taking a shift. Why are they taking a shift? This is where I want to start. I want you guys to write this down. People want to know who is behind the brands that they are buying with. It's important to them now. I mean, years ago, people really did not care that much. They would fall in love with the brand, right? And now they are falling in love with the person that is behind the brand. Now we have people wanting to know who started this company. Why did you start this company? Why was this company and why is this company and this brand and this mission important to you? These are the questions that people are asking now. So I want you all to really take a moment and I want you to write down these things. I want you to ask yourself, who am I? Who am I to my audience? What is the value that I add to my audience? And how will I let people know why I started this business? Will I talk about my mission? Will I talk about my vision, right? I want you to really take a second to ask yourself, will I share the story behind this brand, behind this mission, behind this vision publicly? And if you're thinking, no, I'm not gonna share it. Yes, you are gonna share it because people truly want to get to know you. So many of you all are spending time putting out content about the product or the service specifically, and no one truly knows the heart behind what you're doing. So today I want you all to shift. 
right? After this live, I want you to make that shift. And I want you to start really letting people know why you are doing what you're doing, why you started this business, this brand or this movement and how this movement, this product, this service, whatever it is, is going to impact the lives of other people for the good. Another thing that I want you all to focus on to really start growing on social media is the pain point. You know, something I've learned in business is that every single person has a pain point in their business. Does everyone know what a pain point is? A pain point is you taking the time to know, research and understand where your customers problems start. OK, what issues they have. Right. What things they want to resolve. Right. What is that thing that is holding them back in their businesses and holding them back in their lives overall? You have to identify that. So write this down. If you're watching, I want you to really ask yourself, what problem am I solving in the marketplace? Right. Sometimes we think that it is the actual service. Sometimes we think that it is the actual marketing that we're doing. But what I am realizing is that some of us do not have a hungry audience because we are not solving real problems in our business. We have to identify the pain point. And when we identify the pain point, it takes a lot out of us, right? But it changes the game for our business. Why? Because it causes us to niche down and really focus on the people that we are working with and the people that we want to work with, the people that we have this desire to connect with. One of the problems that I see in businesses often is that we don't niche down because we want to say that we can work with everyone. OK, we can fix every problem. We can take every customer. We try to create different services and different products to fit everyone because we don't want to miss out on a dollar. And one of the things that I've learned over the last 13 years in business is that everybody is not my customer. OK, I have to niche it down so that I can really identify who my customer is. And when I take the time to niche down and identify who my customer is, guess what happens then? I'm confident, okay? I'm secure. I can speak freely to my customers, to my audience. Um, I absolutely know and understand who I'm marketing to, who I want to work with. And then I can start creating products, services, and events around those specific people versus being the person that says, I can cater to everyone. Let me stress this. We do not cater to everyone, okay? Every one of you all on here, you have clients and you have a customer base that is for you and specifically for you. Your brand is not for everyone. But we also have to start from the beginning. And the beginning is you getting in contact on a deeper level with your audience and letting them know, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you growing this business? Okay. Why are you promoting this business? Why do people need to get involved in what you're doing? When I go to most of your social media pages, you're just posting a product all day long. You're posting a service all day long and you're trying to figure out why is this not converting for me? Because people don't know the heart behind it, which is why you see some of the people who are killing it on social media, who are doing these big sales days. Most of their content is them, right? On their personal pages, all right? So the next thing I wanna stress is that you wanna be able to use your personal brand to leverage and to flow and guide those people over to your businesses, over to your business page, okay? Let me say that one more time. The personal brand just navigates the people over to the business brand. And you have to use the personal brand to incorporate all things. The, per the purpose of your personal brand and building your personal brand is for you to show people who you are. It is for people to get to know you on a personal level, right? It is really the wall that builds the trust. So you got to put that wall down and you have to establish trust. I tell people all the time that when people like you, they listen to you. But when people trust you, they buy from you, okay? The goal is for you to establish trust 
with your audience. And you do this through the first thing that we talked about, which was authenticity, relatability, sharing your story, letting people know why you're starting your business. The next thing we do is we create a hub, a space, a community. Now, this community can depend on what you feel as though is best for you. It can be your social media. It can be Instagram, okay? It can also be TikTok, right? It can be Twitter. It can be threads. I always tell people to identify where people are at when it comes to their business, meaning where is your audience most of the time? Wherever you have the biggest audience, focus there. Um, one of the mistakes that I've seen people make is they're trying to be everywhere on every platform before they have a team to assist them in that area. And they go crazy trying to do it because it's just too hard to keep up with. OK, I've seen people have ma just major success. OK, on different platforms like Instagram and then Instagram is blowing up for them. And what they do is they leave Instagram and they go to another platform that is not really working in their favor. And they spend more of their time over on that platform versus nurturing the audience that they already have on the platform that's working for them and monetizing that platform, okay? So I want you to start using the platform that is working for you more, all right? I want you to use that platform as a hub, okay? How many of you all understand what I'm saying? Focus on what's working. I always say that we want to focus on what's working and we want to outsource what's not working for us. What I see is I see people doing the complete opposite, okay? They are trying to focus on what's not working. <laughs> and the thing that is working, they're like, let me get somebody else to run this because I have this and it's working. But the thing that you want to always do is you want to grow and you want to flow in your greatness, right? When we are working and we are building, we want to build in the areas that we are good in. So if we know that we're good in a certain area, then we can continue to strive in that area. We can continue to flow in that area. We work in our greatnesses. We don't work in our weaknesses. I always say work in your strength, not in your weaknesses. So take a look at what platform is working for you. I want you to look at your Twitter. I want you to look at your Instagram, look at your Facebook. And so many of us are, we sleeping on Facebook, you know, sl <laughs> sleeping. A lot of people are sleeping on Facebook. Facebook is still making people tons and tons of money right now. I see more people making money on Facebook than any platform across the board, right? So let's talk about this. How do we start monetizing? We start monetizing when we do all the things that we spoke about when we first started this live, which is the authenticity, you know, focusing on one platform, letting people know why we're doing what we, what we are doing, building that relationship with our audience. And then we get into building community. Now, let me just say this. There is so much power in building community. OK, you all know I am I'm Ronnie Brown. I am the founder of Girl CEO. We have a huge community for women over there. And that did not happen overnight. OK, that took time. How many of you all are going to invest fast? Y'all better be there. OK, I'm going to be there. If you have, if you are not going to invest fast, you better go get your tickets. All right. Why? Because that is a community, a powerful community. And what you are seeing is the result of people nurturing, people problem solving, right? People providing value to an audience. And this is just to show you all what can happen when you nurture and build a community, right? We have Invest Fest coming up. We have so many people who are going to be attending that event. But what this is, it is a community, is an example of what happens when you grow something amazing, when you solve problems, when you help people, when you provide valuable information, the community will grow on its own. So the first thing I want you all to think about when it comes to growing your community is what problem are you solving for your audience and how will you monetize that? Now, let me say this. So many people fear giving away information for free. That is the biggest pushback that I hear from entrepreneurs if I give away everything I know, how will I continue to make money? Okay, well, let me share a secret with you. The people who give away the most information win. And what I've realized is that it's not information 
that will make people say, well, I got all the stuff from them. I don't need to take their programs. I don't want to be a part of their community. I don't want to be on their text list. I don't want to come to their events. People never say that when you give away information, okay? When you over deliver, when you provide value, people will continue to come back. Now, what they will say is this person is not willing to give away information, all right? And when you are fearful of giving away information and solving problems, people are not going to come back to you, right? Because they will feel like you have limited information. If you take a look at people who are thriving on social media and who are making a lot of money on social media, it's because they've gone through years and years of training and expertise and they've invested in themselves and they've taken master classes and they've spent money on mentorship and all the things, college education, whatever it is, they have invested in themselves in some shape, form or fashion. And now they sit on social and they provide that value. If you take a look and you do any type of analysis, you will realize that the people who are growing very quickly and very fast are the people who are giving away information on a consistent basis and they're giving it away for free. Now, your question is going to be, Ronnie, we're on here talking about how to make money on social media. If I'm giving away everything for free on social media, how will I make money? Well, let me share a secret with y'all. Best friends, here's the secret that no one is telling you. 95% of entrepreneurs are not struggling with information. Y'all want to know what they're struggling with? They're struggling with consistency. Most people are not flowing and thriving in their businesses and making money, not because they don't have information. Let's just be honest, you all. We are in 2023. Chat GPT is putting everybody out of business. Everyone is giving away information. Um, everyone is trying to provide the value. But what is missing is the intimacy and the connection. What is missing is people need accountability. And people join communities. People join your movements. People show up to events because they want accountability. So the first way that you need to start monetizing your business is through building your community. And you don't have to do this in a fancy smancy way. What did I say? Find the community that is working for you. Find the platform that is working for you and work with those individuals. If you're going to grow on social, grow on social. Okay. If you're going to meet with your audience, if you're going to do in-person meetups, do that. The point is that you're nurturing you're growing, and that people are constantly feeling that connection with you. People will join whatever you have if you are consistent and you are giving them some level of accountability. Now, let's talk about another way of growing on social media, okay? Are you monetizing your pages, okay? I'm gonna speak mostly on social media when it comes to you know Instagram because that's where most of you all are. Now, Instagram is growing like crazy right now. And there are so many ways for you all to be earning on social media using Instagram. I want to talk about a few of those, okay? The first thing I want to make sure that you all do is have your account set up as a creator account. If you do not have that set up, please go get that set up, all right? Now, what does getting that set up do for you on social media? The first thing is it allows you to be able to accept badges on lives. And we just talked about authenticity. We just talked about building relationships. We just talked about growing your community. And one of the best ways for you to grow your community is by going live on social media. Ronnie, why do I need to go live? Why is this important? Well, you're not scripted. You're being authentic, right? You're not you know, showing up as someone else. You're just flowing. You're being yourself. Y'all, I'm live right now. This is me. I'm not reading a script. I don't need a script. You know why? Because I've done this for so many years. I can teach. I can talk freely and I can add value. I can be natural. It gives people an opportunity to see who you naturally are. All right. So you're going to go live. Now, social media has now given you an opportunity, especially on Instagram. Everyone's monetizing on every platform because they see that monetization is the way to keep users on their platform. 
Now, if you're going live, you want to be able to monetize. So you want to go into that creator account. You want to turn on that monetization feature and you want to make sure that you are turning that on so that you can get badges when you go live. Now, what are badges? Some of you all have not set this up. You do not care to do it or you just didn't know about it, right? But if you didn't know about it, now you know about it, get it set up. Some of you all need to go to that back end, turn on the monetization feature, make sure that your page is set up as a creator page, a page and then turn on those badges so that you can get paid when people are watching your live. You wanna encourage people if they like what they hear, if you're providing value, if you solved a problem for them to, you know, donate with the badge. Um, for me, I also always reward my my badge people. I always shout them out. I always show them love. Um, why? Because I know that they didn't have to. And if they see the value in my content and they decide that they want to contribute and they want to make a donation, then I celebrate them. And I definitely decide, I definitely, I definitely encourage you all to do the same thing with your audience. Okay. Another feature that's really cool that a lot of people don't know um, that is in the back end of social media right now is people being able to leave a gift. All right. On your reel. How many of you all are familiar with that feature? Comment in the chat. Let me know if you are familiar with that feature. You've seen it. You've watched someone's reel on Instagram and you see a little gift. It's like a little Christmas box at the bottom of their video. OK, well, that means that now if you're watching a video, um, if you are seeing some sort of content on Instagram or reel specifically, you can now give people a gift. All right. And that gift is a financial contribution towards their content. Because let me just say this, content creation is difficult. It's not easy. People think it, they think it's easy, but it's hard. It takes time, especially when you are putting in a lot of work with, with your content. It's not easy, okay? So when I see content, when I see videos that I love and I'm enjoying, I am always tipping those people. So let's just talk about how to turn that on. You go into your back end, um, you go into your monetization, you go into your reels, you can enable gifts on your reels, all right? Now, what does this mean? At first, people, they were doing like real bonuses and things like that. If you got a certain amount of plays, they will reward you with a small, you know, financial reward. Now, it's almost like a tip. If people like your content, they see what you're doing, they can now offer you money. They can say, hey, here's $5. I love this. I love this video. I learned something. I enjoyed this content. They can literally leave you a tip right there at the bottom of your video, okay? So you wanna make sure that you turn that feature on. Go ahead and turn it on. <laughs> turn it on now if you're watching it, okay? All right, you wanna make sure that you're turning that on. Another cool way that you can monetize on social media, on Instagram specifically, you all, is you want to make sure that you have on your subscribers. Now, subscribers came out a while ago. Um, I, I loved it. I was one of the first people to be able to test it out, use it, and you know, give feedback about it. But it was an amazing thing. Why? Because so many people started to make money with subscribers. Now, let's talk a little bit about this subscriber thing, because some of you all are going to say, Ronnie, why would people want to subscribe to me? I don't have a whole lot to offer. I don't think that my life is that interesting. Um, I don't think that people would even want to pay me. Right. Why would they? What do I really have to add here? I want you to go ahead and take that thought and I want you to trash it. OK. Go ahead and trash it. <laughs> trash it, trash it, trash it. Why? Because the biggest mistake that we make is thinking that we don't have value. And every one of you all who are watching this live today, you have something that you can offer the world. How do I know this? You're probably thinking, Ronnie, what do you mean? I don't have an expertise. Some of you don't have a business yet. You're here because you are an inspiring, you know, entrepreneur, right? You are like, you know, I, I aspire to be an entrepreneur. I aspire to be a business owner. I aspire to be a millionaire, but I haven't quite came to the point where I know what I'm going to do. All right. 
let me just remind you of this. People will subscribe to your life as you figure it out. People will subscribe to your life as you figure it out. And every one of you on here, you've done something in your life that someone is trying to do. Whether it is working a certain job that someone has a dream of doing. Sometimes we don't, you know, we, we take our jobs for granted. Shout out to everyone on here that is watching this and you're still working in corporate America. Okay. Don't let the world trick you into thinking that you have to be an entrepreneur. Okay. Everybody is not an entrepreneur and it's okay to work in corporate America and monetize corporate America and use that income to invest in your business. All right. Don't let people on Instagram trick you into thinking that you need to fire your boss, quit your job and struggle. All right. Use the job to fund your business. <laughs> okay. All right. And while you are using it, take pictures, record it and allow people to subscribe to the process of you potentially becoming a full-time entrepreneur or not and just balancing corporate America, right? And being an entrepreneur as well, all right? There are people who will sign up to see that. There are people who want to see that journey, right? There are people who want to see how you actually balance it all. Another thing, if you are a dad or you are a mom, you're a parent, whatever, there are people who will subscribe to your page to see how you balance parenting and business. Some of us are overthinking this. So we have not turned on our subscribers. Turn your subscribers on. The great thing about subscribers is it doesn't have to be a huge subscription rate, okay? People can join you for $4.00. People can join you for $10, $9.99. People can join you for 20 bucks. People can join you for $50. Hey, you can charge people $100 a month. It is totally up to you, all right? But what I will say is that there is always someone who is willing to pay to subscribe to something that you've overcome in your life. Funny story. Years ago, when I initially started entrepreneurship, I struggled really bad with waking up in the morning. It was just not my thing. I could not get up at five and six o'clock. And I wanted to be a better entrepreneur. I wanted to get up early. I wanted to be more productive. I wanted to have that schedule of waking up, praying in the morning, and then doing my workout and then getting to business. It's just something, you know, I've always wanted to do. And it was at the top of my list. And I beat myself up about it for such a long time. I decided to invest in this community and this class where it taught you how to wake up in the morning. OK, it taught you how to get up, get your day going, be productive. Right. And be even more effective than you've ever been. When I got into this community, I realized that there were thousands of people in this community. When I say thousands, I mean thousands. You are, I was shocked that thousands of people were paying money to be a part of a community to simply help them wake up earlier in the morning. Okay. It blew my mind. Now, this is a prime example of how very small things can be niched down and how you can monetize those things on social media, right? By niching down and figuring out what is it that you've overcome and you've mastered that you can teach people how to do. Some of you all have not started your business. You haven't started your brand because you feel like it has to be how to make a million dollars in 10 hours. Well, that's not everyone's problem. There are people like me who will pay to be a part of a community that is just about getting up early, getting up an extra three hours earlier than normal, all right? There are people who are looking for simple fixes in life, and there are things that you can do to monetize and grow and build that community on social media. So when we talk about the subscriptions, right now there are people making thousands of dollars a month via these subscriptions. I am one of them. I have tons of subscribers online and I share a lot of 
business, behind the scenes of my life, on my subscribers only. So the next thing I want you all to do is go ahead and turn on those that subscribers only feature. And if you feel like, hey, I don't have a lot to offer, that's okay. Just go ahead and start with the $4.99 option. And give people a little razzle-dazzle behind the scenes. Talk about your journey. Talk about your life lessons. It doesn't have to be fancy smancy. Start with where you are and what you have. We always feel like it has to be over the top, all right? We always feel, feel as though it has to be super, you know, dramatic or we have to show people how to make $10 million by tomorrow. We don't. People are interested in the simple things. Simple things like, how to wake up early, how to cook healthier meals, you know, in under 15 minutes or less, um, how to do workouts that, that provide results in under 20 minutes. Think about very simple things and very simple problems that you can solve and that the value that can also be added to your subscription. Okay. Now let's go on with making more money making more money on social media. Um, we talked about building the personal brand and using the actual personal brand platform to kind of take people over to the business brand. Uh, one of the things that I will also suggest on ways to grow your business is to incorporate your products and your service into your everyday life on social media, okay? Ronnie, what do you mean by that, okay? Okay. What I'm saying is that you don't have to be a salesperson. If you have been used to being a salesperson all the time, I want you to forget about it. I want you to stop it. I want you to be organic. I want you to be natural. And I want you to incorporate whatever it is that you are doing into your business on social media, right? As your platform begins to grow, you will notice that people will become more interested in you than they are in your product. Right. And with that, you feed them your product, you feed them your service within your marketing, within your promotion, within your advertising. And I'll give you an example. Right. A lot of people talk about the Kardashians. You know, they talk about, oh, my God, whatever. But the Kardashians are very unique in their marketing style. Right. How many of you all have your favorite celebrity, whether it's a Kardashian, whether it's Beyonce, whoever it is, guys, you have the guys that you follow and that you love. What would you rather see? Would you rather see them advertising to you all day, every day? Or would you rather see more behind the scenes of their lives? Okay. How they're waking up in the morning, how they start their day, their businesses, their meetings, how they solve problems. Which one is more interested, more interesting to you? Go ahead and comment in the chat. I can guarantee that you're going to say the thing that interests you most is the behind the scenes of their lives, okay? Smart Cookie just commented in the chat. She said, Ronnie, I want to see the behind the scenes of their lives, all right? Gerard says, behind the scenes without a dot, okay? Spicy LaFleur says, organic lifestyle. Ernest Govin says, behind the scenes. The Friendship Society says, Ronnie, I want to see problem solving in meetings. Now, what blows my mind is that we say this, all right? But when we are creating content, we don't think that people want to see the very thing that we want to see. We completely forget, okay, that we are consumers as well. And when we, when we create, we don't create from a standpoint of this is what I enjoy, so let me create more of the things that I would consume as an entrepreneur or a business owner. We start creating and we completely disregard what interests us, okay? So my question to you today is what interests you? Write down the things. If you're watching this, grab a pen, okay? I want you to take a second and I want you to grab a pen and I want you to jot down the things that you normally take the time to look at behind the scenes, how to videos, all right? Income producing videos, storytelling videos, funny videos, right? Entertaining videos, all right? And then I want you to really write out what type of content that you can create that is relevant to these subjects or these topics. So many of you guys are not creating content 
and you're not making money monetizing on social media because you're not creating this type, these types of content. All right. I want you to create more content like this. And when you start creating more content like this, a few things will happen. Your social media will grow, right? People will start working on your behalf. And I talk a lot about this and I want to make sure you all understand what I mean when I say people will start working on your behalf. I mean that when you start to provide value content, there are some people that are out here paying for ads, right? There are some people out here paying for visibility, right? There are some people who think that they got to stand in front of cars and, and houses and, and hold up money and put on 20 pieces of jewelry, okay? There are people who think they, <laughs> they have to do all those things, right? But the truth is they don't. There are other people who just provide value. And every time they post a video, every time they put some sort of content out there, there are thousands and thousands of people who are sharing their videos, okay? Comment in the chat if you have ever shared someone's video. All right. And you shared it with a friend and it was a it was an informational video. It was an entertaining video. It was something with a, a problem that you dealt with personally. And you're like, oh, this is good. Or they just said something that was a, that was so good. It just resonated with your spirit. You were like, oh, I got to share this with my homegirl. Right. Or I got to share this with my homeboy. Right. I got to I got to pass this around. You share it with five, six, seven people. OK, I'm looking at Carmen. She's in the chat. She says, yes, Jay is like I have seed is like a lot of times um, saying hi and says, yes, definitely. Comment section is going crazy right now where so many of you all are saying constantly. OK, the Friendship Society says, yes, absolutely. I've done that. Well, let me just say this. There are people who are paying thousands of dollars. And when I say thousands of dollars, I mean thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get that share, okay, to get that feature, okay? There are so many people who are trying to get that level of visibility. The difference between the two people is that one person paid for the visibility, all right? They paid a shout out page. They paid shave room. They pay some page that's going to charge them $2,000, $1,000, $5,000 um, to get that visibility because the goal is to get in front of more people to make more money, right? That's always the goal for so many entrepreneurs because visibility can potentially convert to an actual sale. So there's one person who's paying for that visibility and there's another person who understands that if they just create quality content that it could potentially be shared to those people for free. Which side <laughs> of the fence do you all want to be on? I want to know. What side? Comment in the chat. Which side do you want to be on? I hope that you are saying that you want to be on the side where you can just create good content and people will share it out. And because of them constantly sharing your information, them constantly sharing your platform, then it, it organically grows. And you're not spending $500,000 on ads because if the content is good enough, you won't have to, okay? This is why you see people who are like comedians, their pages are growing really quickly because people are stressed out, right? And the best thing that you can see in the midst of stress or hardship or life getting you down is something that can just put a smile on your face, right? I love organic marketing. And you guys, I've been marketing on social media since, I've been on Instagram since 2011, right? I, I have not paid the shout out pages. Um, that just hasn't been my thing. That is a very, you know, if you have to take that strategy, take it. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm saying that there are so many different ways to grow and market and to make money on social media. And the thing about growing your social media platform is that once you grow it, you have also created a different level of revenue for your business, right? We just talked about shout out pages, okay? So I want you to grow your page and I want you to grow on social, not to just advertise 
your company, your product or your service. But once you reach a certain level and you have a certain amount of people that are following your platform, there are people out there that will pay you for visibility. Ronnie, what are you talking about? Right. People make money every day on social media just by taking a post and putting it up and tagging a company. Many of you all don't realize this, but 75% of the posts that you are seeing on social media, they are paid advertisers, okay? Most of the time, someone has paid this page, paid your favorite influencer, paid your favorite um, company to post on social media. And they're going to pay anywhere between one to 10 grand. There are pages out there that are charging crazy numbers, all right? Y'all send your face, go look at your favorite social media pages, the gossip pages, shoot them a message and see how much they're charging to advertise on their social media platforms. You wouldn't believe it, but people are getting paid $5,000 to put up one post on their social media page. People are going to pay $3,000 to put up a post on their social media page, Right. You see these social media pages featuring different people in their stories. 90% of the time, those stories are paid ads, okay? The, the pages aren't just stumbling across their stories. They're paying the pages to feature them. So what am I saying? I'm saying position yourself to, yes, be able to grow, be able to promote your business, be able to promote your service or your product, but also look at the bigger play. The bigger play is monetization, and every single one of you all should be on social media right now for monetization. And once you get your platform to a certain level, and this is whatever your platform is, this is for you all who are growing on social media. This is for you all who are starting podcasts. Some of you all are on here, you're starting your podcast shows. You're like, I'm launching my show at the end of the month. When you grow it to a certain point and you have a certain amount of views and, and viewership is high, that gives you an opportunity to leverage social media by posting those clips and getting people to come over to that actual um, podcast channel, that YouTube, or even listening to your show on their on a certain platform that gives them the opportunity that now positions you to be able to say, hey, are you an advertiser? Well, my audience is entrepreneurs, people who are working in corporate America and entrepreneurship. We have this many people listening to the show. We have this many people who are watching this show, right? We have this many downloads a month. I can guarantee you that you can get in front of 20,000 people. How much would you be willing to pay me to advertise your business, your product, or your service and get it in front of 20,000 people? Or you may have a social media page. Best friends, it's you have about 100,000 people on there. Take a look at your impressions. Go to your analytics, and I want you all to take a look at those analytics and I want you to say, hmm, I'm getting 100,000 views or 100,000 impressions on my page a month. Some of you all are getting 500,000 impressions a month, right? Guess what that equals? It doesn't equal just popularity, right? I want us to shift our focus and really turn on our mindsets to a place where we understand that attention equals income, right? And if you are getting that, if you are getting that level of viewership, there is someone who's willing to pay to get their business, their company, their product, and their service in front of an audience, right? Everyone on here, we watch the NFL, we watch the Super Bowl, okay? The Super Bowl, do we know how much they charge to advertisers who are trying to promote their businesses on game day? You know what you know what they do? They say this is how many people the this is the number of people that's going to view this show. How much are you willing to pay for a piece of this pie? Okay? There are thousands and thousands, millions. Let me go. When we're talking the NFL, millions of people who are watching that football game. Right? People pay for attention. They are going to companies and saying, "We have the eyeballs of X amount of people, millions of people will be watching this. You want to get your company seen? This is the price. This is all marketing. So when we're talking about social media and just growing your community, 
right? You're not doing this just for your own product and your service. You're doing this because when you grow it, it turns into multiple streams of revenue for you, okay? We've talked turning on your badges. We've, we've talked subscriptions. We've talked selling your own products, right? Another thing we talked going live, people being able to make donations, right? We've also talked about growing that community, monetizing that community, setting up your, your membership programs, your offers, your digital products, right? All of those things. But understanding that while you are doing this, you are building a media platform. And that is what goes over so many people's head is that this is not just a social media platform. You're building out a media company. And once you grow to a certain level, there are people who will pay you to actually advertise on their channel. OK, I want to take a second and we have a few people who sent some questions. All right. Let me see. And I'm going to answer these questions really quick while we only have a, we have about, we have a few questions. All right. This question. First one first. Is Ronnie, I started my business three years ago. This is from Brittany. Um, Ronnie, I started my business three years ago. And for some reason, I keep starting and stopping. I really want this. I'm a mom, but I'm having a hard time juggling because of my job. All right, Bernie. So this is a really good question. Juggling and balancing is a thing, especially when you are a mom, you're trying to make it happen. It is very difficult. It can be a lot. One of the things that I will suggest for anyone, even to the dads that are watching this, to the guys that are watching this, you may be getting up early in the morning and you are getting to a place where you're like, how am I going to find the time to focus on my business? How am I going to find the time to really, you know, put into my, my community and my network and all of the things? OK, well, let me just say this. The first thing that you are going to think about is what time can you actually sacrifice? And we often have time, but we don't realize that we have time. Some of you all are waking up at eight o'clock in the morning when you actually could be waking up at five o'clock in the morning. Five to eight, okay, is the time where you can be investing in your business, all right? Some of you all may be going to lunch in your lunch break. Brittany, if you are going to lunch and you are leaving your job, going to get food, then guess what? That is time that you could actually be spending working on your business, that one hour right there. You could use that one hour to focus on your business if you were to just bring your lunch to work so that you don't have to get up from your desk, get in your car, drive to a restaurant, place your order, stand in line, drive back to work, and then have 10 to 15 minutes to eat your lunch because that is what most people are doing. OK, you have to create the time. Another thing I want to ask is, are you working on the weekend? If you are not working on the weekend, then something I want you to do is I want you to put aside the baby showers, the birthday parties. OK, the girls night out. I want you to do that for at least six months, six months on the weekend. I want you to use your weekend time to invest in your business. OK, that is doing your content that is creating your quotes on Canva. OK, that is looking for a UGC that user generated content that other people um, are putting out there that is going viral. You see a lot of people doing this because they don't feel like creating content. OK, so what are they doing instead of creating the content? They're using viral content and they're reposting it because what? It gets a lot of engagement. It gets a lot of shares. It gets a lot of comments and it drives more traffic to their page. And they're just playing the algorithm game. OK, so you have to master your time. All right. Let me see this. Next question. Is from Miss Phoenix. The question is. Should I quit my job? My business is currently making $5,000 a month and I feel like it can make more if I dedicated more time to my business. This is a tricky one, okay? I get so many people asking about quitting their jobs and they may vend on the weekends or sell products at events and things like that. And guess what? They think that that income is what the income is always going to be. All right. You have to take the time to look at your business income overall. 
meaning not just on the weekends. I mean, six months, one year, two year, three years. Don't go quit in the job. Why? Because the income that you're that you are making in your business is income that you're going to need to keep the business stable. All right. When we talk businesses, we're talking emails, email campaigns. You got to pay for all these subscriptions. You look up and you are thousand dollars, thousands of dollars in just based on subscriptions to run the actual business. OK, your emails, um, your text, your community management. Your shipping and fulfillment, if you have a product, your materials, everything that you're using to grow your company, it has a cost associated with it. All right. Monte Harris says, thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Monte, for being here. OK, but what I will tell you is that we don't look at the cost of running the business and we don't realize that the profit is not not actually the profit. OK, profit is income minus expenses equals profit. OK, if you are not minusing that actual those actual expenses, that's not profit. Their employees, the gas, the supplies, the materials, the apps, the text, the emails, all those things cost money. So what I will say is like five thousand dollars a month overall in a business sounds like a lot. But I can guarantee you that after we minus all the subscriptions, all the expenses, all of the calls, all of the things, I can guarantee you that that thing will go down to about $2,500, maybe $25 to $3,000. And in this economy, you cannot live off of that, okay? So what I will suggest is that you hang on to the job, that you use the job to cover the expenses for your business, and you wait until you triple that income. And then you wait to see how that actually pans out over the course of one to two to three years before you walk away from your job because you will have to go get health insurance. And I'm telling you, health insurance is not cheap right now independently. I have independent health insurance. I'm a mom and my health insurance is over a thousand dollars a month. Okay. That is someone's rent or mortgage at their house. And because I'm a mom with kids, I literally pay a thousand over a thousand dollars a month for health insurance. So Please understand that life starts lifing when you leave these jobs and you don't have that income coming in. Leverage the job. Leverage the job. <laughs> right now, many of us, we are in spaces where we can work from home. OK, you can work from home. You can really make that thing happen for you. Best friend, don't don't trick yourself out of a good thing use it as long as you can. I have friends that are running multi-million dollar companies and they're still logging on to that corporate America job on their laptops from home in a peaceful, comfortable space. They're collecting that check and then they're using it to grow their companies. And they're happy. They're happy. All right. I want us to do, I want us to think long-term, not temporary. Okay. Long-term, not temporary. I know that it looks really it looks like, and let me just say this, it looks like when you are on social media and you're watching these people, it looks like everyone is making a whole bunch of money quickly. That's what it looks like, right? But the reality is it really does not look, it doesn't work that way, okay? You work so much harder in your business than you do in corporate America, and no one talks about this. No one tells the truth about it. No one is honest about it. I have felt like I have been working five times harder trying to get to these questions. So y'all heard a little noise in the back. I'm going through my stories. But I've personally felt like since I've been working for myself, I've been working three jobs. Okay. <laughs> and we glamorize the entrepreneurship. But I want to tell you the truth. You work three times harder. You work longer hours, you wake up earlier, you go to sleep later, the travel wears down on your body, and it's not everything that people think, okay? Another question is by Carly Beauty. She says, how important is it to have a digital product, okay? Let me just say this. A digital product is one of the most valuable lead generation tools that you can have right now, okay? And... If you haven't created one, you can get on canva.com and you can create a digital product right now. Use a digital product as a lead generation tool, 
Okay, you can give it away for free or you can make it $20, $30. It's so easy to do. Whatever knowledge or information you have, put it out there, okay? A digital product is like a book, okay? It is the introduction to who you are. You wanna have something to give to people so that they can know who you are, the information that you have, how you can help them, some of your backstory. Use that as a lead generation tool. I 100% think that every single person should have some sort of product, even if it's not a digital product, but you should have some sort of product to offer to your audience. All right. Okay, guys. Well, let me just say this. Thank you for being here. Um, I am Ronnie Brown. Make sure you all come and connect with me on social, on Instagram at Ronnie Brown, R-O-N-N-E brown like the color there is no i in ronnie and make sure y'all meet me at invest fest um i can't wait to see you all i'll be speaking on sunday we have so many amazing people showing up to invest fest if you see me come up you know show me some love i'm very personable um i'm i'll give you a big old hug and welcome you so make sure that you all are there don't miss out on invest fest it's going to be a time. Let me just say that we're going to have a time. Um, Once again, I'm Ronnie Brown and I'll see you all soon. Make sure that you comment, like, share, subscribe, and all of the things on this video. I hope you learned something and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.